All right, so today I want to talk about people's time trial positions as well as equipment choices for the Olympic road race. Um, now, I'm just going to do the men's today, probably do the women's tomorrow, um, just because I want to get this out quick because I want to talk about Stefan Kung mainly. So we'll just go through the podium contenders and then talk about Kung later because there's some interesting things. So anyway, this is Primoz Roglic looking outrageously lean. Um, he's on the Cervelo P5, nice custom paint job for the Olympics. Uh, Vision, not really custom extensions, but sort of is custom extensions. Like they're not 3D printed just for him, but they're sort of off the shelf. But um, they're pretty nice. Laser Volante helmet, um, looks like a Santini skin suit, gloves, overshoes. Um, rear disc, I believe, is the same as most people run for Shimano teams, which is a Roval 4, uh, 3, was it 432 or 321 rear disc? Um, and then front wheel is the classic Aero Coach 100mm, deep as, and just does the job. Um, got a ball cage, aero, um, aero one. Uh, in terms of chain rings, pretty sure it'll just be 58, 44, 58, 46, something like that. Um, and then he's running coarser speeds, tubeless front and rear, which is good. Pretty much fast setup you can do. Um, really position, like obviously he's on the corner, um, so not maybe the best he has, but his position is always good, um, no doubt about it. Then again, uh, second place, Tom de Milan. Uh, surprise, surprise, basically same setup, but he doesn't get the custom bars. He just gets some um, ski bends. Um, and the way he holds the ski bends is pretty interesting because obviously he doesn't have angled armrests, so he just has his hands. And well, I mean, you can see there's no point me, me demonstrating it. Um, he's obviously on bio racer stuff, which is pretty quick apparently. They've got their own wind tunnel testing. Whether you think wind tunnel testing is useful or not is up to you, but they do have one. Um, chain ring is going to be the same, and the wheels are all the same, frames the same, everything else. Um, but yeah, pretty nice position. Laser Volante as well. Both got visors on, which is interesting. Maybe they tested it, it's a lot quicker, but obviously the, th- the key thing to remember about this is heat. Um, in Japan, it was pretty hot and humid, and uh, people, some people did that. So he's gone long sleeve, he's gone short sleeve. Maybe, you know, it was just the skin suits available, but generally if you can get a long sleeve one that doesn't have too many creases around the elbow, generally seen as quicker, but does depend. Um, then we've got Ryan Dennis, who finished third. Again, he's on his own kit. He's got the cask um, Mistral, I believe. Could be the Beluga, but I think it's a Mistral. He's Princeton Carbon Works front wheel, and I believe Aero Coach rear wheel. It looks like the MB pattern, but I think he goes Aero Coach rear wheel because it's outrageously quick. Um, Tamil tires as well. So they might be GP5, like GPTT tires, um, like, uh, sorry, Continental TT tires, which I'm pretty sure like basically as fast as their TT tires, well, the old ones, you can't buy them, I don't think. And then they've got, um, and then they've got like the pattern of the GP4000s on them, which apparently is really aero. Um, so yeah, I'm not 100% sure uh, what tires they are, but that would be my best guess. Um, and then chain rings will be the same. Overshoes, not, like, I don't know what kit this is, because they're sponsored by like ASICs, I think, but obviously they don't make cycling kit, so it probably could just be a Castelli one, to be honest. Again, he's gone short sleeve, um, interesting decision. Um, maybe he you know, just look, prefers it. Maybe it's not, not too much difference in the wind tunnel um, and all the rest. But the man we want to talk about, and yeah, the Princeton Carbon Works front wheel is like basic copies of Zip. Whether it actually works or not, I'm not sure, but if any of us use it, it must have something on it. Um, maybe it's just deep light front wheel, could be that. Uh, and the Stefan Kung. Now, Stefan Kung is an interesting character. Uh, we're gonna go see why, but he did lose by 0.4 seconds uh, a medal. And we're gonna go try and see where we can get it back. So obviously he's wearing short sleeve um, skin suit, interesting. Um, but you know, a lot of them have, so maybe not the biggest thing. Visor on a Giro Aero head. Very interesting. And then we're also going to talk about the wheels. And um, He's got the same uh, Roval rear wheel. Um, and then he's got a tri-spoke on the front. That's like so 2005, man. Um, but anyway, we're going to talk a bit, a bit more about this in a minute. So actually now, we'll talk about it now. So yeah, this is his Instagram saying he's lost, four, lost by 0.4 seconds. And you know, it is what it is. But then when you think about it, 0.4 seconds is like within the margin of tiny amounts. Like if he'd done one watt more cornered slightly quicker, like he would have got it. So my argument is going to be that his equipment choices from FDJ have let him down. And that's the reason why he wouldn't have podiumed easily. Now, number one, um, we're just going to talk about tyres first. So the tyres he's on are like tubular. So the front one is a tubular. Okay, immediately with a tubular, you probably got five, three to five watts more rolling resistance just compared to tubeless. So let's say he had the same wheel, tubeless on the front, a lot like he would have the metal. Okay, so that's number one. Uh, he's also gone disc. Um, his bike's very heavy, it's like eight and a half kilos. Maybe nine, no, it was close to nine kilos, I think, when someone weighed it. Which, okay, you might think, oh, that, that's fine. But imagine if he had like a custom paint job that was really, really light. Because it was a hilly course. It was 44 kilometers with 800 meters of climbing. So that is pretty hilly. So again, custom paint job, saves 500 grams. That's probably 0.4 seconds. Um, visor, is it worth it? I, apparently, Jira Arrowhead tests very similar with no visor. 
he'd be cooler in the final probably. That could also be two watts more, puts two watts out more, he's gonna do 0.4 seconds. Um, and then, yeah, so with the tires, you might say, okay, yeah, fine, but aren't GP fast? Well, we got Dan Bigham's blog about Dowsett, and this is what he says. He says it's five watts going from, obviously this is track tires and their tubers, but if we could extrapolate the course of speeds, everyone knows is the quickest, right? Course of speed 2.0, everyone says is the quickest, right? So then, there's again, Dan Bigham says five watts. So you might say, oh, Charlie, you're just chatting, but I don't think I am. I think some things maybe, but I think the tires alone are the difference and the reason why Stefan Kung didn't win a medal. And it must be really annoying for him because I don't know if he hasn't read his contract, but if you think what Dowsett was running, he was doing an S-Works uh, shiv with like a, a dodgy pock helmet and all the rest of it, oversized pulley wheels, so 60 tooth fiber light chain ring, all the stuff that was non-sponsored correct. And apparently that was fine for Israel. Maybe FDJ is different. Maybe FDJ, you've got to run the equipment that they say. But for me, I mean, if I was him and I'd go to FTJ and I'd say, well, okay, like, do you want me to win a medal? And they'd be like, yes. It's like, okay, well, your equipment is good, but it's not top, top. Like, can I run my own wheels? Why am I running a tricep? Maybe he just prefers a tricep. I'm not sure, but ignore the tricep. Can I run a tubeless tricep if they exist? I don't know if they do, do exist, but let's say they do. And can I run course of speeds? And if you're Mark Mario, you're like, okay, well, do the maths. Um, and you're like, get Fred Grapp and um, Julien Pino to do the maths. And then they should say, yeah, yeah that's like huge. Like he could literally gain maybe five to 10 watts of rolling resistance, roughly together, combined, if he went tubeless from his tubeless. Um, assuming they are, I'm pretty sure they are. They could be with latex, but even if they're latex, they're still probably five watts in it, three, five watts. And 0.4 seconds is so minimal. Assuming his position, he's been to wind tunnel and all the rest of it. I'm not gonna criticize that, because I think that's, that's you know, you can't do that. But what you can do is look at rolling resistance data, and it's just unbelievable um, that he hasn't, like it just doesn't make any sense and the paint job why i just okay i understand it's the olympics you want to be standing out but i'd rather have a matte black bike which weighs 500 grams less which it probably would do on this one because it's got a lot of pain and guarantee well not guarantee but say 500 grams or 400 grams or 300 grams whatever it's going to be it's going to be at least a couple hundred grams maybe more it's got a big bike like that it just doesn't make sense um and okay normally in tt's error doesn't matter um, in terms of like equipment, I think like skin suits and overshoes, like asshole stuff, I'm pretty sure is quick. Um, like obviously, has he done wind tunnel testing in his um, asshole skin suit? Maybe not. Maybe only the Alley skin suit for FDJ. I'm not sure. But anyway, I think basically what we can say is that Rowan Dennis, who he is up against, I reckon is m m like one of the most dialed people, right? Everything's perfect. Good wheels. Okay, tires might not be the fastest, but I still think, I mean, at least he's not running tubular on the front or whatever he is i'm pretty sure it's a tubular um on the front but even if it's not like he could be running quicker tires and then you know he's got he's just got everything dialed and you can just tell he does and i just think with stefan kung like he's come so close to the winning a stage in the tour and like at some point mate just get coarser speeds and write continental on them and like you would have a medal now and that's unfortunate for him um but yeah, I guess maybe the thing is you if, if he'd won by 0.4 second, I'd be making the same video about Dennis saying, you know, if he just got around a corner a little bit quicker, I guess that's the fine margins. But anyway, those are my thoughts about the men's position. We're going to go through women's tomorrow. I think the women's is, um, yeah, I guess we'll see. I think the time gaps aren't as crazy. So maybe there's not, not guaranteed place movings, but um, there's definitely some interesting uh, things, especially some Velcro shoes winning the gold medal. That's pretty huge. But anyway, cheers for watching and we'll see you in the next one.